Okay, the Weissach effect. And the, we the Weissach effect uh, was, um, was coined, um, a phrase coined uh, for the uh, 928. And uh, the, uh, the axle on the 928 was designed um, with some compliance um, to achieve uh, a toe-in um, when the throttle was uh, lifted or if the, uh, there was sudden braking in during a turn. Um, so under drive, um, obviously um, the wheel here would uh, rotate in this direction and uh, the Weissach effect on, on, the, on the 993 has been further developed uh, and included in the design. Um, so uh, in essence I, I can't drive the, uh, the road wheel and I can't brake it but what I can do is show you um, the effect. So uh, if, we, uh, if we transfer to the uh, plan section and I, 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 uh, um, I grab or press the, so if we can imagine we are now going to um, going to accelerate, um, what will happen is the toe will toe out as per the program. Um, not a massive amount but sufficient um, and you can see that toe out is being is being allowed by the compliance bush moving outboard and you can see there that the wheel is towing out. So when we accelerate so the, uh, you can see how this works now. So you've got a stiff in compression um, tolling arm. And if we um, brake, sorry, wrong way, and we brake, you can see that the tow arm will push the back of the wheel out. You can see the ball joint there um, moving in response to the force being applied inboard. So inboard produces a towing effect. So that's braking in a turn. And, and then if we lift off in a turn, we get the same um, towing. Um, that then catches the, uh, the, uh, the, there's a lateral load on the wheel um, and produces a, uh, a, a steer effect, which counters the, uh, the front axle and uh, produces a safe, safer understeer. The kinematic toe arm, or the kinematic arm, so we get changes in toe as a result of the uh, geometry of the arms in space. Um, we can adjust and uh, just to again walk you around uh, this model and uh, talk about the parts that we refer to as the toe link, the A arm, the kinematic, the kinematic toe link, which is adjustable at this point, and the other link arm, which is the camber adjust link arm. So we'll come on to the effects of these just now. What the effect of changing the length of the kinematic toe arm. People want to do this or need to do this when the car is being used for sport use potentially because they don't want the safety aspect. So we're going to adjust the length of the of the kinematic toe arm here. And we're going to see the effect in real time to the uh, geometry, a static geometry, and what happens at the wheel. So I'm going to move this in and out. So you can see that changes the camber, but it also changes the caster of the rear wheel by in and out. So next, I'll show you the impact of that adjustment, which we can make when we're doing a 993 uh, geometry. So you can see 
I've increased the length of the kinematic toe arm on the eccentric adjuster at this bush here, some rubber metallastic bush. You can see that that has now affected the rear camber and we're wearing positive camber. But the key here is what happens when we move the suspension. So uh, watch that toe as I go through bump now. You can see that this now toes out through bump which is a dangerous place. That's not soft, that's not stable and that's not agile or, or maybe too agile. So that develops a toe out. That's a toe out which is unstable. Now let's shorten the kinematic toe link and uh, we see what effect that has on the steerage of the wheel. You might want to call it bump steer. We've shortened the kinematic toe link now and we've got back to slight negative camber on the rear left wheel and to prove how that affects the bump steer characteristic of the rear wheel let's put it through some bump and you can see there now we get toe in. So kinematic toe and the 993 axis actually really quite complex because it comprises of two things the kinematics of the links given by the links will present a path in space for the wheel to follow which is beneficial the kinematic or compliance link helps which is the application of force laterally i.e. when we're in turn moving the compliance bush here, producing, producing towing and the model shows that really quite well. On the actual car uh, this point here is a, an adjustment point as well as a bush and you'll see an eccentric adjuster here and the same with uh, this one here another eccentric adjuster um, there's the third eccentric adjuster which is up buried down at the back here which is on the what we call the camber. Um, we find um, if these have not been, uh, if the car hasn't had its geometry done or a wheel alignment done in many years we tend to find that these points are prone to seizure and, uh, and which necessitates then us having to um, cut them out uh, with a cutout with a reciprocating saw, replace the bush and the eccentric bolt that goes through. Um, it's really important that these places are all free so it doesn't compromise how the wheel is set in terms of tar and camber and of course it's critical that we um, adjust the kinematic toe and we do that by uh, placing a Oh, there's uh, two ways of doing it. One is to place uh, the OE, um, the factory tool, on the wishbone here um, and on the uh, control arm, on the tow control arm. Another one is, uh, is uh, the autometrics tool, which is the motorsport, what we call the motorsport tool, but um, specifically autometrics, which uh, attaches to the wheel carrier here and measures this. Um, in essence the angle of inclination here of this angle here it measures that angle in relation to the vertical um, the key is that uh, when we set the kinematic toe that whatever we do for this wheel um, we do we would do for this wheel which is not here but uh, so uh, we've had some um, traits and characteristics that you might want to be aware of when the kinematic toe is set incorrect a surefire way of uh, determining whether the kinematic toe is set incorrectly or is unbalanced across the rear axle is as we have remind you that when the wheel goes through bump it goes through a programmed toe in um, which is uh, on the uh, manifest of um, Porsche's stability program and uh, if you can imagine if the kinematic toe uh, affects the bump steer for example the kinematics of the, uh, uh, the toe kinematics then if it's different on the other wheel for the same bump the wheel will steer. Uh, the consequence is that the rear of the car will tend to steer uh, laterally 
over a straight bumpy B road. Um, the uh, the other characteristic is that if the uh, if you're turning on a wheel which has got its kinematic toe setting correct, as I showed you earlier, um, we can get toe out produced on the rear uh, wheel, and uh, which gives an unstable um, toe and turn. Um, and potentially you might find that you might get a bit of understeer or you might get massive oversteer. So uh, it's important that we set the, the kinematic toe using the tool. Um, uh, the workshop manual says that if we adjust the camber here um, using this link um, and adjustment at this point using the eccentric adjuster then we must also adjust the kinematic toe into the right range. Um, if uh, geometry is being done and we only change the toe on the toe link arm here, then um, we don't have to obviously recheck the uh, kinematic toe or make adjustments here. So we were talking about the tuning and maintenance of the uh, the LSA rear axle, um, admitting and accepting that uh, some of these components now have done 150,000 miles. The cars are 20, old, as old as 27 years old, and um, and that takes its toll. Um, we find that there's uh, three main issues with the axle. Um, the design, remember, is that each of the bushings at the end of the links on the inboard, here, here, and here, um, are these specifically are hard rubber bushings where there's a compensating bush here um, which is supposed to be soft rubber bushing. The uh, ball joints also um, with there's five there's, well, there's, well, there's five ball joints there um, uh, including the one at the front of the A arm here. Uh, this one takes a lot of load and we find that uh, if there's wear in the ball joints, that's a knocking or a clicking. Um, we find that this one is a culprit. And uh, uh, this one here on the toe control arm. And also the one on the bottom of the, or the outboard of the A arm. And we check for those before we do geometry and advise replacement if there is any slack there. Um, the other uh, issue that we faced with is... Uh, specifically uh, at these points here and here, which are also adjustment points for geometry, is um, corrosion of the aluminium, uh, specifically the rubber aluminium bush, um, which then uh, leads to delamination of the rubber from the aluminium um, and uh, produces um, a, a loose effect. So uh, the bush then becomes loose. Um, i.e. the forces being transmitted up and down these links uh, are not being resolved and uh, are pushing the, uh, the link arm outside of its programmed path, um, both in these three points. So best to replace um, these bushes uh, with OEM. Um, we very rarely see issues with the inner bush here, um, um, but uh, if we are going to have to replace the A arm because of the ball joint wear, um, then uh, typically we will, um, if we can't find an original uh, OE replacement, we will take this bush out of the outgoing arm and fit it into the new arm so that we've got the same amount of compliance across the rear axle. The only other thing then is this, if we see this as the adjuster, for example, this is an eccentric adjuster. So as we turn it on the, uh, on the actual car, it will make this link longer or shorter. And we tend to find that these C's also, so this one and the camel one and the toe. So uh, for, for, for any geometry, these obviously need to be free and, uh, and lubricated. So there you go, well, there's the... Uh, there's the, uh, the maintenance uh, issues uh, and uh, maintenance points also identified just to give you a bit more information on uh, this LSA axle which is, um, 
is uh, the, uh, the, the predecessor to the, the same multi-link suspension on the 996 and on the 997 and the derivation also on the 991. So um, investment in the future by Porsche going from the trailing arm to the multi-link suspension. There you have it. Hope that was useful.